Aloha mai kako, and welcome to the fifth and final week of Hawaiian History Month, celebrating the 183rd birthday of Queen Lili Uokalani. This is the second year that the Hawaii Punui Coalition has presented Hawaiian History Month, um, and the second year that we've included Hanakeaka, or theater, in our celebration of Hawaiian history. Why theater, you may ask? It is primarily because the Hawaii Punari Coalition has, since 2009, used living history, used theater, as a means of reintroducing and reminding audiences of Hawaii's history. Um, this, this week, we have two events. Our first one today spotlights the University of Hawaii's Hawaiian Theater Program. This is a new program. This is the newest program of the Department of Theater at Manoa. And it is unique in that it focuses on Hawaiian theater and Olelo Hawaii. We believe that's unique in the world, so this is quite something to celebrate. The living history programs that the Hawaii Ponomi Coalition presents focus primarily on events of the late 1900s. The Hawaiian theater program also looks at history, but they look at the present and they look at what might be coming down the pike in the future as well. The creator of this program and its current director, Dr. Haile Okpil-Baker, is here today and she is going to discuss the program as well as introduce some of her hamana from the graduate program. So, thank you again for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to Kimuhali. Kealani kia loho makahi kina, i ka puka ana kala i hae hae. Hae hae ke aloha me ke ano ai. Ano ai e a kaka me na lehua kaka. Na lehua i ka velina o mānoa. Aloha mānoa i ka ua tuahine. I ke kili nehe mai makawaa ka waahila. A waahila i ke kua lono. Ua lono ku ukino i ke aloha. Aloha nei kula vehela o ke kupu. Kupu a ulu a lau a loa a liko. Kavelina o ke aloha. Aloha mai no kako. Mahalo to OEV Television, Hawaii Pono E Coalition, and our dear Dr. Sammy Choi for the invitation to share our program here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, uh, entitled the Hawaiian Theater Program. For today, we're going to be talking about Pa'akekahua Ea Ke Kukulu. Um, and this is about setting the foundation and building the pillars that will become the future of our program. And I will try and move these slides along and get to our introduction and discussion about the Hawaiian Theater Program. Here we go. We have a website. I point everyone to manoa.hawaii.edu backslash hanakeaka backslash if you want to learn a little bit more about this program that really includes it includes courses on the history of theater in Hawaii, the study and analysis of indigenous Hawaiian theater, and the training in both traditional and contemporary forms of Hawaiian performance. Um, we, with the institutionalization of this program, have been able to promise regular theater productions on Kennedy Theater main stage, as well as other productions connected to the department in various venues across this campus and other locations on, on the island of Oahu. Um, our true mission is to grow practitioners of Hanakiaka, actors, playwrights, directors, designers, 
and technicians, as well as our patrons of Hanakiaka as a form of retelling, reclaiming our history and putting those stories forward so that we may inspire the upcoming generations of keiki who are immersed in Olelo Hawaii and Ike Hawaii. Today will be testimony truly to the growth of that department, uh, um, the growth of our department and the diversity um, within. I want to mention a couple of our productions that some may be familiar with. Uh, we launched the program, the, the MFA or Masters of Hawaiian Arts in Hawaiian Theater in the fall of 2014. In the spring of 2015, La Ie Kavai was our first production, our inaugural production on Kennedy Main Stage which really was a momentous time, uh, being that prior to the 51 years of the existence of this uh, program here at the, the university, there had not been anything Hawaii on the stage, nor had there been anything in Olelo Hawaii. And it was truly a privilege and honor to be able to share the program with our community and to share it with this beautiful mo'olelo from our history in Olelo Hawaii that really showcased um, the, the talent of our students, the beautiful olelo of our kupuna, and the history of Hawaii and the, the idea of ha'i mo'olelo in this form was very exciting for us. I want to fast forward to 2017 when our first, the lehu of the program, uh, Ms. Kaui Kaina uh, wrote and directed her production, Nakawa Hi'iaka, which showed the, showcased the story of Hi'iaka Ikapoli Pele and her mission to return Lohi'au to her sister Pele. This production premiered at BYU Hawaii. It was also reprised at UH Hilo, as well as Chaminade University. Following that 2017 production, we moved into production for Aua'ia Holding On, and that premiered in 2019. This year, we are very fortunate one note about Aua'ia and one note about the other two pictures here before I forget. Um, I would really be remiss not to mention the collaborative artistic team that goes into putting together these productions, these Hanakeaka productions. And those are my huakumu uh, who are featured in these photos. And I really want to extend my deepest gratitude to them as they make these productions possible. Um, I'm one person and I cannot carry everything. And so it's through collaboration and through our um, lokahi and laulima in this hana that we're able to um, mount these productions. So aloha nui, ya oko ena kumu, kumu kiave lopez, kumu snowbird bento, Kumu Ipo Wong, Kumu Kaliko Baker, and Kumu Kihe Nahalea. And not featured, but Kumu Eo Mailani Kukahiko was very uh, instrumental in getting our educational materials together for Aua'ia holding on. So this collective, this artistic team is really the, are really the kukulu of this program. Uh, and as I was mentioning, this year is unprecedented. Um, the season here at Kennedy Theater will open and close with a Hanakiaka. Opening it next week, actually, is Hey Leo Aloha. And we will hear from the director and um, Haku Mo'olelo, Kaipulau Makani Olono, very shortly. Uh, closing this year will be Ho'oilina, uh, and we're going to hear from the director and writer of Ho'oilina, Akea Kahikina, who's going to share a little bit about 
for Oilina and the upcoming auditions for his production. Akia kahiki. Oh, you know, mahalo iko olana mai, aloha mai kako, e na hoa maka maka o kalala wai, a me na mea kako o ma nei nei. Um, my name is Akia Kahikina. She is from Hono Uli Uli, which is the artist now known as Eva Beach, but we want to go back to Hono Uli Uli. So the more you know about her. Uh, I am a final year. She's been a journey in the Hawaiian theater program. And I have wrote a little, little something called Ho'elina. It is a uh, comedy, I hope. <laughs> Um, but in writing it, I really wanted to look at um, where are we as Kanaka right now? Uh, originally writing it in 2019, right before Miss, Miss Kronova happened. But where are we in terms of our history? Um, where are we in looking, always looking and facing the past? I really want to document what's happening currently with the revitalization movement. What are the attitudes towards revitalization and where we have a lot of access to Olelo and a lot of people can speak it and a lot of our people can't because they don't have access because they don't want to, but the access isn't there. Um, so this play really looks at that kind of hierarchy that's that's happening right now. Um, and it's, it's super fun. It's super zany. Um, I, I say it's a farcical hanakiaka because there's just a lot of funny jokes and I just think after two years in the pandemic let's have a little laugh I don't know about y'all but for me I'm just I want to I want to have some fun and laugh so anyway more to that later um if I've piqued your interest in Uluka Hoi just a little bit we're having open auditions for the show um and we're specifically looking for performers you maybe not don't call yourself an actor but if you you know, if you're a hula dancer or a comedian, TikTok star, whatever you do, all of that, I'm not myself. But if you love to laugh, if you love to have fun, come on down. If you have some experience with Olelo Kanaka or Olelo Pa'i'ai, also known as Pigeon, or even our Olelo Mahu, all of our Amiri Kagas out here, just any Hagas, my Agas, and just have a little fun. Yeah. So you can visit this link. You just click on that little, we're going to put that on our social medias, but it's just a little hyperlink. It will um, take you to a Google form, fill her out. There's going to be some fun little video prompts for you to do because um, we want to see who you are and what you bring to the table. Yeah. And it's all again about having fun. And we're looking at having those videos there by November 4th. And then we'll do some callbacks later on um, in the month. Again, this is a UH production, so we want to give our priority to our students. So, Ena Haumana, Omanoa Nei, just bring her forward and, and come along. But again, opening to the public, please, if you're interested, um, do that. I will share the link with you, Lee Miley, in just, just a tidbit. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, please email me, um, and I will send Lee Miley my email as well. I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Any questions, I can send you the link specifically. Now, last year, oh my god, was it last year? Year and a half ago? Gosh, your time just, it doesn't feel like it moves at all in the pandemic. But when we did, we did a showcase, Kapo Leo Halali, um, online virtual, and we had put together different scenes of what we were working on. And so for Ho'elina specifically, I worked with Kaipu uh, Lamukaniwa Lono and his sister Kaipu Kapu. And we put together the uh, one of the first scenes of Ho'elina um, to kind of showcase, you know, what is the show about? Who are the characters? And give a little taste of, you know, what, 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 what could the show possibly give? Is it a comedy? Who knows? Will you laugh? I hope so. So we're gonna show a little bit of that video that we put together, um, just to give a little story for this, these people, these crazy, crazy people in this crazy, crazy play, a crazy writer. Howdy, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
I mean, the candy right there, T. Read the sign next time, okay? No, sir. I'm not here for that. Hmm. Told you. Wait, yes. <laughs> um, just leave your lovely little pamphlets right there, okay? Oh, no, sir. Uh, do you know someone who... No, 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 no. We don't need a piano. Mahalo. No, I was hoping you would be willing to help. Yes. You like me convert. Next year, Trey sent me one handsome con, and I swear I'm going to witness all over his Jehovah Lakalani law. Trust, okay? <laughs> ah, hui ho, yes, hui ho, yes, hui ho. No, 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 please. Wait, it will only take a second. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so. Hello, May. You know, the Unzaga, she is not the best to um, <clears throat> for showing the video, so she's a little, little bumpy. But that is a good reason, perhaps, to come to the actual theater, which we will, right now, as of right now, health-wise, CDC, all of the things, you can come to the Hale Hanakiaka O Kennedy and see her in person, because it's not the same to be on this little Zoom square and, and look at her. So anyway, um, that trailer actually is available on YouTube. Um, I will send that link as well uh, in just a moment while she's all back. So if you want to enjoy the full 15 minute little little teaser as to for Elena, please feel free to do so. Again, I'm really, really looking forward to submissions from our Lehu Lehu, our Kayaulu, our Lahui, as Kumahai is saying, you know, with only there's we can't carry everything as one person. And so when it comes to writing and then directing and telling these stories, it's definitely a kako thing, definitely an effort to lahui together to work hard to tell the stories of the lahui. So again, very interested. If you, have, if you know anyone out there who might be interested or you know someone who is a great comedian, again, this show is very funny. I, I hope maybe you laughed once, who knows? Um, if you know any funny people, you know people who speak these languages, it's a very language heavy um, play, code switching musical, basically. Um, yeah, and we really, really look forward to seeing you from April 15th to April 24th in the, in the theater. Let's get back into those seats and, and laugh and enjoy. Theater only exists when we have an audience, when we have our Anaina with us. So um, yeah. But that's gonna close us off. And what's gonna start us off is Hele Oloha. And just open the doors, open the, the Hale again, dust off the cobwebs, get us back in the Hale. And very excited. Please, please also support us with um, joining us for Hele Oloha happening in Kaipu. It's gonna talk more about that. But I think that's yeah. for Elia. I'm not gonna, she's very pokey here, so I'm not gonna keep Ho'owala'o. If you have any questions, Mahalo. put in the chat. Let me know. Mahalo e akea. Um, mamu oka ho'omau ana e ka kaipu. Um, before we move forward to kaipu, we had a discussion about 
you know, is this in Olala Hawaii or is this in English? I guess we are code switching today as well as we move to this. But I wanted to mention that Akea and Kaipu are the second and third student to enter the MFA program. So we are still young and growing. And in a little bit, we'll be hearing from um, student, uh, I don't mean to number them, but student <laughs> number four, five, and six. It's really amazing to be doing this kind of work and to be uh, supporting students and telling mo'olelo that are important to them, mo'olelo that they are inspired to, to speak to, to honor their kupuna, to honor uh, the legacy of Ike Hawaii. And before we move forward, I just want to pose one question to you, Akea. Nokaholu iana o mo'olelo. If you can just share what was the inspiration behind writing Ho'oilina? Absolutely. And I just realized I didn't even talk about what the story is. So mahalo for that question. Um, so inspiration for this mo'olelo, um, taken back, 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 back about a kekeke ago in her decades. Um, my mom originally was in a creative writing class at KCC and started to put together this idea about, you know, a house near KCC and the luxurious Kahala. There's a will reading, there's a girl who comes and we find out she's part of the family. It's this whole thing. Now she was more goes going on the romance novel. And I'm like, what if I just make it wacky doodle dandy as I am? And again, put it into a time where revitalization is happening. So what it is, we're set in Kahala, the luxurious, you know, Golden Coast or whatever. And there's a will reading with the Kanaka family. And right as they're about to read it, all this luxurious stuff, you know, they get all the kind of stuff away, Kiki, they're making money, they got their coins. Somehow, knock, 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 that girl that you saw, her name's Little A from Austin, Texas. And she comes in and she's like, hey, I'm a part of this thing too. And the Kanaka, as we are, very protective of, you know, of what we have in our whole Elina. We're like, who is this girl? Where is she? Why is she? Um, later we find out, spoiler alert, she's diaspora and that she's secretly a part of the family and family secrets come out as they do. But again, it's also looking at Kanaka Maoli identity for those who grew up in their Kulaivi in their, their birthplace, and then looking at what happens when diaspora are not there. What kind of um, attitudes or kona ike do they adopt in America or elsewhere that conflict with kanaka that are living here? Um, I think that's a super interesting question to explore, where if we all share that kind of, I don't, I don't want to say koko, but ivi, um, let's go away from the blood quantum and try who are ivi, and that ivi that are that are left in the aina to connect us together. What happens when we have that, but we're not being raised in the same aina? How does that shift things? And where do we adopt American perspectives of, uh, this is mine and this is yours and people pass and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to take that. Rather than looking at a Lahui collective thinking, um, there's all sorts of puzzles. Is this a comedy? Is this a political theory? Who knows at this point? But that's that's the inspiration behind it. Mahalo for the question. Mahalo, mahalo anuya oi. Um, yeah, we are very excited for these two productions. And and with that being said, I want to move on to uh Heleo Aloha. And I'd like to call Kaipula Makani Olono. Eho Olono Mai Ho Olauna Koinoa Kau Papahana. Oh yeah, um <clears throat> Mahalo nui kia ho olauna ana mai ia u. Uh, wau kai pula makani olono. Uh, kei kino na pali haoli uli o ke ko olau. Uh, eia no ka uhana kiaka o... Um, no, eia, eia ke kii e ho olaha nei ka uhana kiaka o hele oloha. Um, a, a kea, a me kamuani ala, a me hiilani, a me kaula, a me kaiu, a me i kaika hoi e awamoa e nei. Um, no, no, Kokako Halakiaka, Kokako Halau Hanakiaka, Nalela Kelo Hanui Oko, uh, Mahalo Piha. Uh, Aloha Mai Kako, um, my name is Kaipula Makani Olono, uh, and this Hanakiaka that, uh, that I wrote, um, 
as for my thesis project uh, is entitled Hile Aloha, which in opening the season, I think is a little bit fitting. It is a leo aloha, it is a leo kahea, hea hea kuana, i kea naina, i ka lehu lehu hoi, e maliu mai. E maliu mai no hoi i kea papahana hana kea ka amako. Uh, no laila, to all of you who heard that leo kahea and responded with your, uh, with your presence on this Zoom, uh, ke aloha no ia oko. Uh, me ka live stream no hoi, ma ka Facebook, ka me ka YouTube, uh, pehea la hoi ha, aloha no ia oko. Uh, o heleo aloha, he hana ki aka no ia, e ho hua hua lau ana i ke ia ni nau nui, o e a hana la kakou i ke au pāka avili o ke aloha. You know, where are we to go? What are we to do in the twisting, um, uh, swirling currents that we know to be aloha? And how do we, how do we love one another? Um, mm. And I think we'll play the trailer because there's a lot of information provided in the trailer. And then I'll um, speak a little bit more to that. Mahalo. Oh, for you. Hello, my kako, o wau, o keipula makani olono, and I am from Kahalu, Oahu. I'm a third year MFA candidate directing this play that I wrote entitled Heleo Aloha. Well, Heleo Aloha is basically the story of a girl who hooks up with a guy during the summer, and then the guy winds up um, in her cir social circle somehow, um, and then all the friends find out that she's been cheating on her boyfriend. And these students really try to figure out, you know, what, what is love? And what did our ancestors say about what love is? So they explore concepts like punalua, uh, having multiple partners, um, and different Hawaiian ways of loving one another. A big part of this inspiration for me has been working at Native Hawaiian Student Services throughout my undergrad and kind of just hearing the little dramas that go about in everybody's social circles as you're just there as the employee trying to help everybody out. Um, and the second inspiration would probably be my mentors, um, uh, Kumu Haile Opua, Kumu Keawe, and uh, um, the craft of mele, of uh, Hanakiaka and kind of finding a way to meld those things together and to create a, um, a sort of melody of the two. So in this piece, we have some beautiful new arrangements uh, by Kawai Hona Kealoha under the direction of Kumu Keawe and the Tuahine troupe as well. And the, the context adds to the mele and just the beautiful choreography uh, and uh, composition led by Kumu Keawe is just, I think, it'll be very much appreciated. What's really exciting about this production is that we get to see um, Kanaka who are dressed like us, they walk like us, but they don't quite talk like us. They speak in a language that is more uh, appropriate to perhaps traditional storytelling. In the language of the play, we'll have um, allusions and odes to history's past and, you know, the really the traditional mele, the mo'olelo of time immemorial all the way through to the present. Do you like Hawaiian music? Do you like beautiful voices? Come on down, uh, because it really is a, a one of the better showcases, I think, of um, what Hawaiian mele can and should be, I think, in its appropriate context. And, you know, mahalo to all the possible patrons of this show. Mahalo for supporting. Mahalo nui. Eia mai he kono, he leo hea hea, he leo ho okipa. E nanea mai e ko Hawaii. I neia leo alo. Uh, oh yeah, so kind of a lot of information present provided in that, but I'll just hone in on a couple of the key themes that Hele Aloha really tries to focus on. Um, and I think that point about, you know, what do our mele, these mele that we listen to all the time that were made famous by, you know, kind of legendary composers and artists such as Johnny Almeida um, and Arali'i Nalani Eha, um, Charles E. King, all of these people who compose these mele that really would stand kind of the test of time and we, we're still playing them. Um, gotta be like almost 100 years, like puka 100 years now. Um, 
what do what is the context in which we can lean into those mo'olelo, to can we lean into those mele? Um, and what insight do they provide for kind of the quotidian uh, dramas that we face in everyday life? Like, this is a very kind of, it's a, it's a rather benign plot, I think. You know, it's not, there's nothing really interesting that happens plot-wise, but what the cool, the, I think the part that really makes Hele Aloha a watchworthy piece is, you know, the fact that these haumana in Hele Aloha are going to look to solve, um, look to remedy this very kind of regular situation through Ike Kuuna. Um, and kind of their knowledge of Olelo, their knowledge of Mele, their knowledge of Mo'olelo and Olelo no Eau are what is going to inform how they deal with everyday life. And so it, Hile Aloha in that sense is a little bit of a challenge to all of us to, to lean in to those Mo'olelo, to lean into those Mele that we know. You know, we, we all know sweet and lovely Keala Ona Ona Kamaile. But how does that inform our relationships to each other? Well, it teaches us that, you know, aloha he ho'oheno i ka pilipoli, you know, and ano ai ka velina keleia e au mikuule. So understanding the, um, the manao that these kupuna put into our mele and embedded in our culture, um, as those mele became parts of our everyday lives, they're still on KCCN, um, you know, 105, and they're, definitely on Spotify. They're definitely on Apple Play, Apple Music. Um, so how do we lean in to the mo'olelo, the olelo no eau, and the mele that are all around us? Mm. And how can those things inform our everyday choices? I think is kind of one of the big uh, endeavors of Heleo Aloha. No Leila. Yeah. And, and with that, you know, it really looks at how can we in our everyday interactions with one another, you know, kahu ika mana o kokako leo. And how can we, you know, haku i na olelo kano eo o kokako mau kupuna i loko o kakako olelo. I mauai, i manai, i mauliai kokako leo. A e malama ia ia leo, he leo aloha. Nakamea ina oka ahi ahi kahana oka ni ani a kapana i no leila e aloha no kako e aloha a he aloha vale no e a aloha mahalo e kai pula makani olono malia paha e koma ho oi ikavala au maka hui ana ona haumana a pau hikino um. All right, a holo muana kako. I I wanted to um, just share some concepts, and you know, <clears throat> as you see, Kaipu and Akea have created mo'olelo of this time, and our Hanakiaka, even though they are speaking to now in the future, they're still rooted in the core concept of mo'olelo and sharing mo'olelo and how our storytelling today truly draws on the traditions maikawa yo kikiloa ma yeah um <clears throat> from the time of our kupuna and and the the practice of oratory the practice of sharing tradition through song, through chant, through storytelling, through dance. Uh, all of this is encapsulated in the productions that we are seeing today. Yeah, um, that was very much uh, foundational practices passed down from one generation to the next that we have taken and, and really embraced the the proscenium the stage and utilize that 
in order to share our stories and to continue the practice of ha'i mo'olelo. Um, truly at its core, Hanakiaka is about community. It's about reconnecting to our identity through language, through storytelling, and through our, our ancestors, inclusive of land, environment, animals, sea life, and kanaka, and akua. And so this practice is, is not really new, even though it's been fashioned or adapted for the stage. It's something that is connected to a long chain of ancestral storytelling and practice. Um, with that, um, we'll be talking a little bit about community engagement and language revitalization. And I wanna harken back to the early days of Kahalau Hanakiaka, which was a student group. Um, this is a, a Hawaiian language theater troupe that was uh, created shortly after our first production of Kalui Ko'olau in 1995 in the Earl Ernst Lab Theater here at Kennedy. Uh, shortly after that, I entered the MFA in directing program here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And that journey allowed us as a collective, and you can see many of the founding members of Kahalau Hanakeaka in these photos, it, it allowed us to start to create and promulgate Numo Olelo, to turn to the newspapers and pull out stories like Maui Akamalo, like Maui Akalana, like um, Mo Olelo for Navahi. Uh, and we were able to fashion these mo'olelo and to raise the bar with each and every hanakiaka that we did and to also reconnect with our pai aina and even the more distant cousins in the Pacific. Taking these stories and touring these stories across Kohawai pai aina and then to visit our hoahanao in Aotearoa, uh, in Palau, in Kahiki, in Nuholani, right? Taking these stories was a way for us to kind of build um, a firm understanding and a, a deeper connection to our mo'olelo and the practices of what hanakiaka truly is, right? how we draw on traditional knowledge and how we use our bodies and we use our voices to share those mo'olelo today, how we embody and allow ourselves to be vessels for our kupuna to speak through us, for our kupuna to kind of transcend into this day and time in order to inform, educate and entertain our people. And with that, yeah, the history of Kahalau Hanakiaka, we've been able to, and, and I've had um, an amazing opportunity to delve more into the research aspects of looking at what the foundational elements are of Hanakiaka. What are the, the kukulu, right? What are the pillars that make Hanakiaka? And these four things are truly the pillars. It's mo'olelo, it's that connection to story and history. It's ku'auhau genealogy, right? We are connected to these individuals that we showcase on stage through our genealogy. And because of that, we have a responsibility to them. We must be authentic and we must be respectful in our retelling of these stories. And we're held accountable in a sense um, by our kupuna to share their stories in a, in a true light, right? That has it, um, that shows them kind of full circle of who they are. And it's not a stereotype, right? We're not, 
um, sharing what was written in the Pepa Olelo Haole, we are looking in the Pepa Olelo Hawaii, the new Pepa Olelo Hawaii, to see what everybody was thinking at the time in which these stories transpired, right? When these, these events happened. And here featured in this particular image is Kalui Ko'olau Pi'ilani, their son Kale Manu, and Ko'olau's mom Kukui. These individuals walked this earth and they had experiences that were multifaceted. And it's important that we represent that to honor them and to do that with truth and to do that through a kuana ike Hawaii. And using our olelo is probably one of the best ways to represent those stories. Don't change their words, use their words. Yeah, elevate their words and amplify their words through our, through our art form. So olelo Hawaii is also another pillar as well as hana no eo. And hana no eo encompasses so many different things, right? It's not just the oli and mele and hula and kaka olelo, but it's also the kuku kapa, right? It's kapa making, it's hula ki'i, it's various types of art forms, yeah? And even lua, our martial arts, it's drawing on all of these skills, all of these practices that have been handed, out, handed down one generation to the next. Um, from lay making to fishing, those are all hana no eo. So it's really drawing on that, that knowledge, that ike, that base that allows us to um, uphold hana kiaka with strong kukulu that are foundational and representative of Hawaiian practice. And so when I think about the future, Kalamai of the program, I think I may have, no, my kai, I'm good. When I think about the future of the program, right? I, when I think about the future of Hanakiaka, it's truly about building capacity, right? I would love it if we had Hanakiaka on each and every island and not just me. I think this is something that would be very healthy for our community because when we start to tell our stories in Olelo Hawaii and we contribute to language revitalization efforts, that's an act of self-determination. It's an act of decolonization. And what happens is that that results in more critical academic scholarship by Kanaka Maoli to further the agenda to reclaim our history, to reclaim our land, reclaim our culture and reclaim our language. You know, each and every mo'olelo that we perform in a hanakiaka reclaims history. Each ku'auhau in a hanakiaka reclaims land. Each no'eau in a hanakiaka reclaims culture. And each ku'aolelo in a hanakiaka reclaims language. You know, the performance of an entire hanakiaka is reclaiming Kanaka Maoli, uh, true projecting Kanaka Maoli identity and empowering Kanaka Maoli consciousness. Hanakiaka serves as a pokihi in the construction of Halawaola, you know, the, the long house that regenerates life and promotes healing can be served through Hanakiaka. And it can help us to build our Kanaka Maoli Dam. And, and that's where I hope we are going. So creating more Kanaka Maoli practitioners, academics, researchers, educators, and possibly one day having a Kanaka Maoli School of Arts, right? And along those lines, creating industry. So professional theater, building that industry that is unique to who we are, where we are, and our mo'olelo uh, for our people, to lift up our people and to really grow Ike Hawaii, Olelo Hawaii, Ahana Hawaii, Iloko Okekuana Ike Hawaii. And with that, 
um, what I'd like to do is I'd really like to bring on number four, five, and six. <laughs> I'm, I'm numbering. This is so terrible. I'd like to bring on our next three students uh, who are entering the program. He Ilani Kim de la Cruz is uh, in her second year, and she's one of the lead performers in Heleo Aloha. Yasona Caper and Kamwani Ala uh, Baba Tavares are new into the program. Um, Yasona serves as the assistant director and dramaturg on Heleo Aloha. And Kom uh, Kamwani Ala also is another lead in the, in the production of Heleo Aloha. So I'd like to welcome them and ask them to introduce themselves and then we'll kind of have a little bit of a kuka kuka with some questions and answers. Hi'ilani. Aloha mai kako, o vao hi'ilani, no mauna lua maiau, a noho vao i kalai po haku. Nui ko uhau oli e kama ilio me oko, e pilian i ka papahana hana ke aka. Mahalo a nui, I'll pass it on to Yasona. <laughs> Ano ai ki aloha ya o ko pakahia pō o wono o yasona a o puka mo wau me na kikile makolelo hawaii a ko lai pua me ka lai o a ma ne ino ma mano a lai la o ho i ho mai a a komo i ka papahana hana kiaka a ai o ye hola e kumani ala a ye ai. Mahalo ya sona. Aloha no kako ovo no o kamwani ala Tavares. No hono no kona mayo a he haumana hovo ma keia polo kalamune a pi hoi hoi no e kuipu me keia ohana mahalo ya oe kumu haile o pua. Ai, mahalo nui. Mahalo nui. At kumwani ala e ho o makapaha me oe. Hapayana bau ke ia ni nao. Heha oi i loko ke ku au hau hana kiaka, heha ho i kau pahu hopu. Iki no, no laila, no ke ku au hau hana kiaka, ke ia manao o ka genealogy paha, the history of hana kiaka, the history of this storytelling method. I feel I consider myself very new in the world um, of Hanakiaka, though I, I do consider myself also um, a loyal lover of theater uh, for a long time. But for a lot of that has been through the, the Western or Eurocentric view. I feel like that's kind of been a lot of my exposure to theater and um, so that's why I consider myself new to the world of Hanakiaka and I'm really excited to be in the program. <clears throat> to be back home in Hawaii looking at theater through the lens of our um, Oivi uh, and our Lahui. So yes, very new to that. And then my pahuhopu, uh, my, my goals uh, joining this uh, and being a part of this is just to be, to do exactly that, to join it, to be a part of the narrative, to be a part, to have a, a seat wherever I can at the table um, and help to do exactly what Kumo Haile was mentioning, be a part of creating a professional industry perhaps, or uh, the education and, and being able to maybe teach or always learning, always, always learning, uh, a life learner, and really put at the forefront the stories of our kupuna and the stories that live within us now as Kanaka Oivi, as Kanaka Maoli, um, the stories of our aina, uh, the stories of our, um, yeah, of our lahui. So for me, uh, what I love and what I'm excited about is that even though a lot of us might not consider ourselves actors or theater people or um, hanakiaka people, it really is woven into all of our lives as, as kanaka oivi, as people who live in this aina, in this pai aina, uh, because storytelling is a part of being Hawaiian. Uh, whether you partake in it as the, per the person who's actually performing or the person who's listening, um, 
it's always been a part of our of our lahui uh, this hanakeaka right so yeah that, that's my manao really on that um i guess i can pass it yeah, on mahalo Hi, yeah, mahalo anui, mahalo anui, and we are so fortunate to have you in the program. Um, it is a joy to work with you, and uh, yeah, I see so much promise for our future. When I look at all of you, when I look at all of you, there's so much promise for the future. Uh, Hi, very similar to Kamoni Ala, I am also new to the world of Hanakeaka, but I did grow up having like a Western training in theater as well as my family on both my Makuahine and Makuakane side are heavily involved in theater. My grandmother on my dad's side was a director in theater. She was an actress, she wrote plays. And then on my mother's side, my mom danced hula, she did ballet, tap, jazz, all sorts of dancing, singing. And then her mother's siblings are also directors for like musical theater and choir. Once I entered the Hanakeaka program, I was talking to my Ohana about it. And I wanted to know if my family on the Kanakamoli side was ever involved in any form of Hanakeaka. And surprisingly, my grandma told me that my great grandmother was. She was heavily involved in like music, especially like Hawaiian music. She only spoke Olalo Hawaii. So, um, and this was of course during a time when that wasn't allowed, it wasn't encouraged, but she still, like she still passed down music. She still passed down um, mele to the family. And so my goal in being in this program is to connect with my great grandmother, whom I've never had the chance to meet and talk to about. I know my older sister has, but I never had to. And I want to um, tie in my passion and my background for theater with my identity as a Kanaka Maoli and reconnect with Hanakeaka. And I hope to take what I've learned from this program and pass it down to my Ohana. So just again, with the revitalization of Hanakiaka and what Kumu Haile is doing, I want to be able to carry these traditions, carry what I'm learning, pass it down to my ohana and also to Haumana as well. Mahalo anui ehi ilani. Um, I'm going to call on Yasona at this time. So, eia kahini nao. Hea ke kumu a i meaha komo ana i papahana. Mahalo. Uh, so my story with both theater and Olala Hawaii are very closely connected, uh, going back to my work when I first started working at Kumukuhua Theater. I've done a lot of work there over the years. Uh, that was what, particularly I, I give credit to Alunia Apio's play Kamau for kind of pushing me into being interested in taking Olala Hawaii while I was uh, as an undergrad, uh, but also at that time, I went into the theater department and uh, didn't. There wasn't a place at that time for uh, Hawaiian theater, Hanakiaka, or even really, you know, much local theater, Hawaii-focused theater in general. And so I didn't. I didn't feel like there was a place to connect the work I was doing at Kumukuhua with uh, the academic realm of theater that we had. And so I was pulled just over to Olalo Hawaii and theater was a side thing. Uh, and then uh, I was in the most recent uh, Hanakiaka production years later, <laughs> fast forward to, to 2019, Ala'iel holding on. Uh, I came into that and saw, oh, the theater department has changed a lot, right? The Hanakyaka program is now this part of it. Uh, and now there was a space within the theater department where I could do the kind of work I was interested in. Uh, and so I decided, oh, okay, time to bring the two things together, Olalo Hawaii, my work in theater, and come back for that uh, now theater degree that I'm just starting. 
Mahalo anui e ia sona. Um, Pehea, ka ipu mamake oe ho ike koma na o no ke komo ana i loko ke ia papahana? Hey, well, he can know. Um, well, originally when I was uh, looking to apply for a master's program, um, I was either going to go into Olelo Hawaii or English because that was where my um, two BAs were. Um, but, you know, I was really thinking about, you know, what did I want to accomplish? And I wanted to be able to showcase the brilliant mo'olelo of our kupuna um, and to really kind of grapple with, um, you know, how can we improve, how can we imbue our olelo with um, the, the ike and the na'awa of our kupuna, kind of just constantly um, lean into um, the olelo no eo and, um, and mele and mo'olelo that we are so fortunate to have a repository of. Um, but I was really struggling with, you know, if I write this in a paper, <laughs> is anybody gonna read it? Um, but in Hanakeaka, we are working, you know, guarantee that at least the people in your cast are gonna know what you're passionate about it, what you're working with. Um, but, and, but we have the opportunity, more importantly, to take these hanakyaka into communities um, and to really bring that mo'olelo, bring that, those mana'o, those ha'avina into, um, into our lahui. Um, and that's really what the power of hanakyaka, I think, is the ability to create a space for a sort of critical discourse um, where we can put our mo'olelo on the table. And I think you saw this explicitly with Aua'ia holding on. The conversations that happen just outside in intermission um, or right after the hanakiaka, people were really beginning to grapple with, you know, the ramifications of our history um, and how putting all the dots in alignment and forming that beautiful constellation that is our mo'olelo. And yeah, it hurts, but we're getting through it. And it's okay to be sore. It's okay to be tired, but we are going to be, um, we're still fighting the good fight, I guess you could say. Um, mm -hmm. But the way we can do that with all, with so many different topics that are not just solely um, kind of history oriented, but, you know, I think in Hele Aloha, you know, we're thinking about, you know, what is Aloha and how can we Aloha one another? In Ho'oilina, we're dealing about, um, we're going to be talking about identity and what does it mean to be Kanaka Maoli in all of these different spaces? Uh, and, you know, I'm really looking forward to the to the work that, um, you know, Ki'ilani and Kamwani Ala and Yasona are going to do because all of those are important conversations that we need to have as well. Um, and I think each theater artist uh, and each uh, la-la of our little halau in here um, has a mo'olelo that only they can bring to the table. Um, and each conversation is a conversation worth having, even if it's, wow, that was beautiful, or my God, we really do need to think about this. All the, the theater provides a space for us to see the same thing and talk about it. Uh, and that's something that I feel like we need now more than ever with a kind of, you know, the, the fallout of the political divide of America that is unfortunately <laughs> having ramifications on Hawaii. But we need spaces like this to have a kuka kama'ilio, to, um, to see each other, hea hea Oh, yeah. Mahalo mahalo e ole e kole ai ole maka whakipuke paha, ana ina ana mana olike ole 
Aloha nui a o ko e nā hoa o kahala o hana keaka i ke wau ka inoa o Malia. O Malia ka mea hana keaka mua loa <laughs> i loko o kela hana keaka o kalui ko o lao me oe ka velina o ko aloha. A he olino lino aloha ke ia ia oe e pili lua i ke kai o hilo. Uh, mahalo no ko mau mana o. A pela apu me kahi kumu, kahi hoa pili o Meliana Meyer, mahalo a nui no ko mau mana o. A uh, he nani no, he nani no, mahalo. No na mea apa o aui a o mai ai, ia mākou, a me na papahana kākou i hana puai. Aloha nui, aloha nui. Uh, lo ano ke kahi nina o ho aku, mane e um, ia, uh, Vanessa Lee Miller. Mahalo i kau nina o, mahalo a nui i kau nina o. A uh, eia kahi mana o, a ole loa ka hana kiaka me ka ole o ki kaiaulu. Komo na lala na kanaka hana kiaka, ma vaho o ka keke ena hana kiaka, ma vaho o ke kula nui i loko o na hana kiaka. A ole, a ole e holomua na kahi hana me ka ole o ka po e makaukau mai vaho mai. E, na Hawaii, makaukau, maka ka ike... Uh, Hula, ka ike hanakiaka, ka ike uh, lua paha, elike me ka mako ho, ho mako kau ana no au a ia holding on. Ua huli mako i ko mako kupuna, uh, ka mako olohe o umikai, nana no ia o mai, nana no i kuhi kuhi mai ka hana no na mea pili i ke kawa i ke wakahiko. No leila, uh, e leka mai, e hele mai paha i ka uh, audition no ho'oilina paha. Um, uh, e imi kako i ala e hana pua i kako. No leila, mahalo anui no kau ninao. Hoi hoi wau e launa pu, e launa pu kako. Um, ok, uh, and midori, Mahalo anui kau olelo. Um, beautiful words that you've put in the pahukole over here. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, and um, thank you for the appreciation of, of this art form and, and the creation of space for Hawaiian stories to be told. Maka olelo Hawaii. Uh, to honor our aina and honor our kupuna and honor our kupuna as well as honoring one another as kanaka on this earth. Um, okay, we're gonna kind of huli to preparation. Uh, I thought it might be an interesting thing to have a conversation about what it's like to prepare for a hanakiaka uh, and how that might differ. So we're gonna ask Hi'ilani to take the lead on this and then maybe Kamwani Ala if you have mana'o there as well. Uh, so Hi'ilani. Hi, so for preparing, for a hanakaka versus any other um, forms of theater, one has to really take into consideration the four kukulu or the pillars of hanakaka, as Kumu Haile mentioned, Olalo Hawaii, Mo'oku Oho, Mo'olalo, and Noeo. With Olalo Hawaii, I've actually been learning Olalo Hawaii for about a year already. And being in the university classes has really helped me to understand script for hanakaka, what the characters are saying, how to say the words. And I've also received guidance and support from the fellow Hanakiaka Haumana and Kumu Haile as well. As Kanaka Maoli, we are a collective. We're not individuals. So we kokua each other. We help each other because we want to really make sure that we are telling the mo'olelo and we are representing our kupuna well. It's not a us versus them sort of thing. We're a collective. Um, and this leads me to the second point with mo'okuo ho. So when developing characters, when developing our character biographies, we have to remember that we're not just playing random characters, we're playing those who've come before us, perhaps characters inspired by the akua, the gods, or inspired by real people today, like in He Leo Aloha or Ho'oilina, um, which was really beautiful, by the way, learning the inspirations for those um, hanakeaka. And as Kumuhaili mentioned, we become vessels for 
these characters and we tell their stories. So it's very important that we put in the research and the effort and good intentions into portraying these characters or these people that have came before us to tell to those who have yet to come. And then going into Mo'olelo, it's the same thing. It's not just a play. We're not just telling a random story. We're telling our history. We're telling the stories of our people. So it's especially important to know what the Mo'olelo is about. What are you trying to convey? And who is your audience? Um, and then with Noeo, as Kaipu mentioned in his play, it's filled with music and hula and dance. And as Kanaka Maoli, we use these traditional and contemporary performing arts forms to pass down our mo'olelo. So it's in us already. It's just make it pa, make it correct. And I'm actually taking a hula class this semester with Kumu Noenoilani Zudermeister. And it's been so much fun. It's a lot of hard work. And learning these hula that have been passed down has been a really great reminder for me about why I'm in this program and what I want to do when during this program and then when I leave the program and pass down what I've learned. Yes, we are performers, we are playwrights, we're directors, we're costume designers, but we are also telling Mo'olelo, we are representing our kupuna. So it's very important to take these into consideration. And that's what I believe makes it different from other forms of theater. Um, we're telling true stories. We're, we're true people. Um, yeah, I'll pass it on to Kamwani Ala. Mahalo. Mahalo, Ilani. I love that. Uh, for me, it's my very first full-length play in Olelo Hawaii. So that was a big shift for me, um, living in a world fully in Olelo, especially in the elevated, eloquent text that Kaipu gave us. Um, it felt Shakespearean almost to me. Um, the kauna and the the use of the, the Olelo in such a powerful and... Um, yeah, elevated sense is like, it felt like if I had to connect it to something, it was like Shakespeare, right? So the, an, the analyzing of the text, the analyzing of the choices you make as an actor, and then also making sure that the choices live within the realm and the world of Hawaii thought process. So that's been very interesting, very challenging for me as well. Um, and I love, we love a challenge, right? So for me being, so invested and in having experience in the Western theater setting. Still a lot of things cross over for me, same kind of similar warm-ups, you know, um, stretching the body, getting the voice, the lip trails, all of those things, I still use it. Um, so kind of the, the marriage of those two, those two worlds, and then realizing that the, the preparation from the actor standpoint in filling the character right with all of this kind of insight and and giving yourself as much information as possible to really make the person grounded and real and, and living in this space that is that we're creating as actors as storytellers um it was it was it was different it was interesting because it was a different kind of kahua that i was building um and 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 it really was influenced by the language uh, and the Olelo and that being at the core of it was really what shifted it for me uh, from other experiences in theater. Um, the Olelo and then the connection to the hula and the mele. And yeah, so for me, that was the, the major difference. And it's been so fun to explore that. And I'm excited to continue to be able to have opportunities to explore um, Hanakiaka. And yeah, th those are my mana'o. Mahalo anui, mahalo anui. Um, Malia paha he wa mai kai ke ia e huki ai ia ia sona e kama ilio e piliana i kana mau papahana e hiki mai ana. Um, since the, the concept of Shakespeare was brought up, I think this is a nice transition to maybe call upon Yasona to share just a little sneak peek of something that is brewing, something that you are working on right now that will likely turn to be a qualifier and thesis. Um, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about 
the research that you've done and um, where you're heading. Yes or no? Oh, yeah. Are you pahamaka mute? Aole, what pio pahaka ibuleo? Ah, pelikia pahaka wifi. Lohe vau ya oi, lohe vau ya oi. Oh, my kai, my kai. Okay. Follow my. I know pelikia ka wifi, wifi mane. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd worked, I was saying I've done a bunch of projects drawing from the, the new paper, right, the historical Hawaiian language newspapers. And one of the things I ran into exploring those was all these translations of foreign literature, uh, including Shakespeare. Uh, usually Shakespeare in a narrative form when it had already been adapted as a story and then translated, but uh, there is a part of a script of Julius Caesar, the actual script, play script uh, that has been translated. And so I got interested in taking, taking that uh, and also taking other Shakespearean plays and using the historical model as an example to translate some plays and uh, produce them and actually perform Shakespeare, Makalelo Hawaii. And so it's something I, I thought of a while ago and, and never got to, and now I want to uh, make that my focus while I'm in the program. Uh, and yeah, so I'm looking at starting that process right now, of course. But, uh, you know, like uh, Kamoniala mentioned, so much of the language that uh, has been used in the previous Hanakiaka and current Hanakiaka does feel like Shakespeare with the poetry and and the metaphor and you know all the and if anyone who's familiar with Mele knows that that is just flowing all the time uh, and then the other thing that connects for me is uh, a comment that mentioning Eleni Opio again, uh, I was at a talk back once where he was asked, oh, why do you write some of the lines in Wait, I think we cut out again. Oh. Together like, well, if you you know, if we watch Shakespeare in a language that we don't, you know, today's English speakers don't quite understand, then you should be willing to watch it in a little Hawaii too. Why not? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mahalo, mahalo. And ua hana ia mana ano olelo like ole. Na ano olelo like ole. Koka kopo e hoa hanao, kapo e Maori. Oh, two gentlemen of Verona. Yeah, that's on film if you're interested in watching that um, with Te Ari Pakahi. Uh, they, they took that one on. And then they also, um, Rei Kura uh, Kahi um, directed uh, Romeo and Juliet, actually, a, a few years back in Te Reo Maori, as well as um, Troilus and Cressida. Um, which actually Rawiri Panetene took to the world state. He took to the globe as a part of this large celebration of having all Shakespeare's plays performed in different languages from around the world. So there are a number of models, I think, that um, we can look at and can support you as we move this forward. I'm really excited about that because it'll it'll likely be our first one. And so we have so many exciting firsts happening, you know, uh, and, and it's 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 just a beautiful time of growth. And we have so many opportunities. And and I hope and and really look forward to more students coming through the program because for each and every student that comes through the program, that's another play. That's another hanakiaka. That's another path 
um, or another leg in the journey, right? Or, or another mana mana, right? Uh, or la la stretching out and creating new branches on this tree of Hanakiaka. And that's super, super exciting. Um, I wanna uh, express gratitude and, and aloha to those who are putting mana'o into the pahukole. Um, aloha nui e mani, mahalo no kau mau o lelo malila. Um, and much aloha to the ohana kololoyo. Um, yeah, so much aloha and support from you guys over the years and, and just, yeah, mahalo e ka ohana. And as well as um, kahimau, Kai kamahine e hoolohe ana e kapi o me keve ula aloha nui. Hau oli loa mako i ka ike ana ya o ko kapule aku nei a lana kamana o he ike ho mai ko i ke ia pule. Mahalo no ka hoolohe ana malia paha he mau me a hana kia ka ana o lua i ke ia vai hiki mai ana. Um, and mahalo nui uh, to all of the beautiful mana'o that are coming through. We appreciate your support and we really hope that everybody can see Heleo Aloha, which will be streamed right? so it can make it to any house around the world, any place with Wi-Fi can, can watch Heleo Aloha. And, and I also want to put out that earlier, I think Le Maile put into the the Pahukole, um, the links for La Iekawai as well as Nakawa Hi'iaka, which are archived on OEV Television's website. You can watch those at your leisure with or without subtitles. Um, yeah, if you wanna watch them one time and then go watch them with the subtitles in English to see how you got it. These, all of these things also become teaching tools. Uh, and I know that in my Olelo Hawaii classes and as well as um, the Olelo Hawaii classes of my Huakumu, we're starting to utilize these, these works as um, language learning tools. Uh, and this can be used as language learning tools in any household. It doesn't have to only be in a classroom setting. Uh, if you are a learner of Olelo Hawaii, I encourage you to go in and watch these videos and listen to the beautiful Olelo <clears throat> and the metaphoric language in the different mele and, and allow that to be a tool for you to increase your your language fluency and your language acquisition. Um, I, I, I think I wanted to share that um, there are a few things that have been written on um, Hanakiaka as curriculum. Uh, and this is a project that I am currently working through with Dr. Eomailani Kukahiko. We are trying to create drama education that can be taken into the various Kulakaya Puni. Um, I've also been in conversation with um, Anella and uh, Kaui at Office of Hawaiian Education so that we can create uh, professional development for Kumu and that they can take the shorter Hanakiaka or the longer Hanakiaka and utilize them in their classroom settings. Um, and years ago, when I was uh, teaching second year Olelo Hawaii, one of the capstone projects was students performing a hanakiaka at Mukiki Vaina Mamo o Manoa. And that was their final exam. Their final oral exam was to perform these shorter one act hanakiaka. And what I found was that when they would learn dialogue from Olelo, um, that it would help with their language acquisition. It would help them to learn how to emote in the language. It helped them to understand, oh, what is this person thinking? Or how are they standing when they're saying this? What is a, a proper Hawaiian way to show our affection or to show um, concern? <laughs> um, and, and so it was a great teaching tool and I, I continue to use it as a teaching tool and want to be able to give that tool to other kumu as well so that they can use it in their classrooms. Um, because it's a, it's a beautiful way to 
one, read Mo'olelo, two, honor the Mo'olelo, and three, have your students embody those words of our kupuna and, and share those mo'olelo in class. And, and it comes alive again, right? You know, and, and it helps to reconnect us um, with kava ihala, amen kupuna. Uh, and, and, you know, seeing our kupuna in ourselves. Yeah. Um, okay. So one last uh, round. I think we'll just go right around and to close this off. Um, and the question I'm gonna pose, I'm gonna pose to everybody on the panel. Um, what are your thoughts, uh, dreams maybe for Hanakiaka five years from now, 10 years from now? And I think I will start with Ka'ifula um, <clears throat> Makani I think Well, in five to 10 years, I think, you know, kai pau hopu nui o eno ke kuluma ana o kahana kiaka. Um, I would like to see more, I, you know, obviously facilities to facilitate the production of hanakiaka and spaces willing to host hanakiaka. Um, and, you know, really the development of a kind of a capacity for a professional industry, because just as a patron, as somebody who wants to see shows, I want to be able to attend Hanakiaka. Um, and yeah, I think that's something, that's a, that's a huge goal um, and it's very broad, um, but, you know, maybe I think the path that we're going on right now, it starts in the classroom and it starts in getting Haumana um, ready. And if we can get more into the Kula Kayapuni and hopefully inspire Haumana to stay home for school, to stay in Hawaii, to learn this Mo'olelo and continue to serve our, um, our Lahui and our community, then we build kind of capacity. We have a pool of, you know, talented individuals who are passionate about our mo'olelo, who are passionate about olelo Hawaii. Um, and then I guess it's up to, you know, the people with the good logistical skills to um, put everything together and kind of, you know, go through the budgets and, you know, figure all of that kind of stuff out. Um, but yeah, mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo. Uh, Hi'ilani. Very similar to what Kaipu said, I want to see not only the Hanakiaka program with more haumana, more productions at University of Hawaii, but in the Kula Kayapuni and as well as the like public and private school um, in Hawaii as well. I think if you're going to go to school in Hawaii, you should learn about Hawaii. And especially as someone who didn't go to um, Kula Kayapuni, I went to public school my whole life. And that's where I've started my theater education and where I've gotten my Western, you know, theater background. But I think it would be amazing to teach students about Hanukkah, about Hawaiian theater, um, just to like, ground them into where they are. And I would also, wow, five to 10 years. Yeah, I would love to just bring my children to watch these shows too, to show them, I went to this school, I did shows here. <laughs> Might do it one day too, no pressure, but do it. <laughs> but, and um, similar to when we brought Aia to New York City, I would love to see as well, like more, um, global like interactions of Hanakiaka and more exposure to that. I think that would be amazing to see. And we're heading towards there. We did it with Aua'ia. We're going to keep doing so. We're just keep moving forward. Kulie kanu. Kulie kanu. Mahalo. Yasona. Hey, mahalo. Uh, yeah, similar to what's been said uh, in this ideas of expansion and 
yeah, that it's not just the same us doing it all the time, but to get to the point, it is nice to be able to sit in the audience. Um, and then specifically with, with my project and working with Shakespeare or even this larger idea of uh, translating other works into Olelo Hawaii. Yeah, I don't wanna start doing this and then be the one person who does it. I want in 10 years, I wanna be seeing, I wanna be watching those shows as well. And, and maybe I'm the one that has to kind of put it out there and be like, this is the thing we can do. This is the thing that, that happens <laughs> in, in our uh, Hanakiaka. Uh, but then I wanna see it happen uh, other people, and, and particularly for my work as a translator uh, on other projects I've done, I've learned that uh, I, you know, translators translate for a certain audience in a certain time and, and a certain instant, you know, you don't, there isn't a translation. Mahalo. Kamuani ala. Mahalo. Uh, yeah, for me, similar sentiments. Um, for me, I think it just boils down to exposure and exposing as many stories and getting our keiki to be able to see, see getting our kupuna to be able to see, you know, that whole range of people just having theater in our communities really thrive and you know, I think of like the Manao of you want to change the world, go clean your backyard first, like you start in your backyard, right? And and so those stories, that's let's start in our own backyards and and you know, really just try to expand and get that exposure out at, at all ages so that you know, for myself, I didn't really know I loved theater until I was like 16, 17 years old. And that's still young, but I wish I had known when I was four or five years old and then could have been harnessing that and, and really like uh, tapping into that love and building on it so that I could have had a lifetime of that. Um, so I think, yeah, if we can expose our keiki, our um, opio, our kamali'i to, to hanakiaka, that's really the, the root of it, right? And then we can expand and by, by really exposing our keiki to it, then it brings in the makua, it brings in the anake, the anakala, the tutus, everybody's in, involved, right? When our kiki are involved. So I think that's where I would love to focus. And then, yeah, same thing from that expansion, helping create a professional industry here so that the people who are telling these stories, you know, we also can make a living off of these things too, right? And have that, that balance of, of our passion and also, you know, the being able to, to live off of that and, and put food on the table. So that in five to 10 years, I would love for that to just grow and to look back at this video and be like, eh, look, remember we talked about that. Look, we're doing it. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mahalo Anui, Mahalo Anui. Yeah, sustaining the work, right? Creating an economy around the work um, and and doing it in a, in a, Keano Hawaii, right? So it's not exploitative, right? And so we are at the the helm, right? And and guiding that growth and guiding that industry that we hope to build. Um, I I want to do one more quick shout out to those who have posted. Um, little letters of love in the pahukole or on the whakepuke, mahalo anui, um, mahalo ya oe kuulei, uh, and, and having seen la ie kawai twice, mahalo anui, uh, and as well as um, lehua nani. Uh, that's so exciting with your students. Please reach out. There's a link on the on the website where you can reach out to us and maybe we can do something with all of your haumana, um, or at least uh, create a path for your haumana to seek information from us. And kahi kahi puanani, kuuhoa, 
Mahalo a nui, ha o nui vau ya oi, a polo le e he puka ua, ika pu'u, pu e he e one, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, mahalo a nui, everyone, for tuning in. Please uh, visit the website. Please come and watch Heleo Aloha from the comforts of your home with whatever libations you might need <laughs> on that Friday evening. <laughs> and I want to mahalo uh, to Kaupo e haumana, mahalo ya akea, kahikina, kaipula makani olono, hiilani Kim de la Cruz, yasona caper, ame Joshua Baba, komoani ala Tavares. Mahalo anui, a mahalo ya oi, ya oi no e sami, me oko kavelina o kumako aloha, a make a mahalo piha. Mahalo. Mahalo nui, Tammy. Uh, hi, Lee. Um, and all your inspiring humana for their, their words about what they're doing now and what's going to happen in the future. Um, we have a number of people to mahalo for, um, for this production of Hawaiian History Month. As you can see, we have a number of Hawaii Punui Coalition members. Kamehameha Schools, Friends of Iolani Palace, Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, Papa Ola Lokahi, University of Hawaii at Manoa Johnny Byrne School of Medicine, Native of Department of Native Hawaiian Health, Ahuhui Onakauka, Center for Biographical Research, UHM, UHM, Vainuiakea School of Hawaiian Knowledge, UHM Department of Theater and Dance, Native Hawaiian Bar Association, Hawaii Youth Opera Chorus, OEB TV, and Olelo Community Media. We also have partners in this month-long effort. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Kanayo Kana, Pam Omidyar, Uli Uokalani Trust, Ahahui Sivila Hawaii, Le Ali'i, Kamehameha Five Judiciary History Center, Hawaii Ha'o Church, Bidi Kanahele Dawson, Ronald Williams, Jr., Ph.D., George Kahumoku, Jr., Mana Music Quartet, Namea Hawaii, Mana Maoli, Mana Ikulea, and Native Hawaiian Student Services. Mahalo to all of these groups. And I would like to point out that this is the second to the last event of Hawaiian History Month. The very last one will be this coming Friday at 6 p.m., October 1st. Um, that program will be Mahalo Turning Points on Stage. We will be showing a video of our actors who perform in living history. And then we have several, uh, we have three notable Hawaiian scholars discussing those turning points in the 19th century and possible turning points that are occurring now in our current history. So Mahalo Nui Law for Tuning in, and hope to see you on Friday. Aloha.